Good day, folks, and welcome to the Two Cents Podcast. This is the Two Cents Show. I'm your host, Jay Richardson. As always, always happy to be with you guys and to give you the updates on what is going on in the sports world, really the stuff that matters right now, the things that I find particularly interesting and the things that need to be discussed. First things first, I got to recap this past weekend's All-Star Weekend. The NBA had a fantastic All-Star Weekend. I love the tributes to Kobe Bryant. I love the NBA All-Star changes to the format of the game, you know, going three quarters at a time all for, for individual charity and then having the fourth quarter, you know, played to uh, whatever the score is, plus 24 points in honor of Kobe. It made the game competitive. It was kind of exciting to watch that fourth quarter. You saw guys taking charges, even though Kyle Lowry, you were flopping like you always flop. I've never seen a guy flop in an All-Star game. That was embarrassing, Kyle Lowry. You should be ashamed of yourself. But the game was competitive. It was exciting. There was a fast flow to it. Made people want to watch. It wasn't just a bunch of jacked up threes and missed lob opportunities like you see in most All-Star games. This was kind of cool. And then it came down. Uh, you watched LeBron and, and Giannis uh, kind of square off one-on-one defensively. Like people play defense in the All-Star game. What? Um, That was exciting to watch. So hats off to the NBA. Kudos to you guys for getting the All-Star game right and having a good All-Star weekend skills competition was was cool to see. It was like Battle of the Bigs out there, which is unusual for a skills competition. That's usually, uh, you know, tiny guards out there passing and dribbling and shooting. This is... This time it's all bigs because that's the way the the league's going. You got to be able to dribble, pass, and shoot even as a big if you want to survive in today's NBA. The only thing they got wrong was the dunk contest. And I wanted to talk about it before, but I'm going to briefly mention uh, the travesty that happened to Aaron Gordon. First of all, you can't put Dwayne Wade as a judge in the gun, in, in, in the dunk contest because, you know, there's an issue. Uh, a guy that – he played with a guy that's a Miami Heat player was also one of the contestants, which is a conflict of interest. We call that he's going to defer to the guy he likes more. And he did. He gave this guy a nine or a 10 on every single dunk. And Aaron Gordon, after he cleared Taco Fall, which, you know, seven, seven guy, I don't care if he was bending over. He's seven, seven. That dunk is a 50 ball all day long, twice on a Sunday. This man did not get uh, his credit. He got robbed for the third time, and he will not do another dunk contest. I don't blame him. I might not watch another dunk contest. It's getting corny now, and these judges aren't being consistent. It makes the game no fun. I get why LeBron didn't want to do it. Anyways, let's get to some of the more pertinent things that are happening in the sports world today. And this is the biggest, biggest news of the week, and it will be until it comes to completion There is a new CBA proposal that the NFL owners are pushing for that they are trying to come to an agreement with with the NFLPA. That's the Players Union. This is basically the labor deal. And I don't know if you guys recall back to 2011 when there was a huge discrepancy in where the owners were, where the players were. It caused an NFL lockout. I remember this vividly because I ended up on the couch like a lot of guys did. We felt like... um, you know, displaced uh, migrant workers and stuff. Like, we, there was just no shelter for us, no team. And, you know, I was a free agent during the lockout, which is not what you want to be if you're not a, a top-level guy at the time. You found yourself on the outside looking in, waiting for this CBA agreement to, to finally get done so that you can maybe get a call from a team. And that was a tough place to be. Um, and there was no football for a handful of months, and then they got it all figured out. This time around, the players and the owners won't let that happen. They're not going to, you know, lose money. They're not going to deal with the issue with having to hire the, you know, the replacement officials that really ruined the game and really set the sport back for a couple years after that. They're going to get this thing done fast. The biggest issues that are are coming into play with the new CBA agreement is really, well, two things. It's the 17 game schedule i repeat the nfl owners are trying to add an extra game to the regular season now on its face this seems like a cool thing right if you're if you're a fan you love this that's more nfl football if you're a player you're okay with it under one condition if you're going to make me work one extra one extra game i'm going to need an extra game check I want you guys to remember back when the NFL first proposed this. When I say the NFL, I mean the owners. When the owners first proposed adding a 17th game years ago, it was under the idea that instead of paying the players for the extra game they played in, they would just prorate their already, you know, 16 game salary into a 17th game. So you still get your same amount of pay. You just get less every week because it's prorated. 
that's ridiculous. That's that's an attempt to be sneaky by the owners because players were going, well, if we're going to play an extra game, are we going to get an extra check? And they're going, yeah, sure, you'll get a check that week, but it's prorated money. It's not it's not more money. What it comes down to is this: the players are, are against, obviously, <laughs> playing for free. But what they're really against is the idea that with one extra week of the NFL season, that instantly means a whole bunch of revenue, right? You're thinking about one more game, one more, one more game on Fox or CBS or the, any one of these huge, um, you know, providers that are gonna and networks that are gonna, you know, it's, it's a lot of money. The TV deal incentives go through the roof now. You're talking about, you know, a, 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 a industry worth billions of dollars adding one more show. It'd be like you're an artist and you're on tour, and they go, "Hey, um, I know you know our tour dates were these ten dates in these ten cities, but we're gonna add one more city uh, for you to perform in." And you go, "Cool. So what do I get paid for that? All the same, just do one more." Well, no, it's not how that's not how it's gonna work. So right away on its face, you think about player safety, right? Everyone first thing they think about is, "Man, one more week of football. That's one more week of hard hits. One more week of potential concussions." And with all of the sensitivity about CTE and um, head injuries and just injuries in general in the NFL, I know people pay attention to that, right? I mean, after week one of the season, there's already an injury list that's a mile long. Just after, you know, one week of all 32 teams playing football, there's like 200 guys who are injured right away. Boom. Just how it goes. So now you're going to add at the end of the season one more game. Now, I'm actually for it. I need people to know where I stand on this. I'm for the 17-week schedule under a couple conditions. One, you obviously increase everyone's base salary prorated by one more game, right, one more outing. And honestly, I think it should be even higher than one more game because the owners are going to make so much more with the TV deals, with the stadium deal, with everything, all the revenue that comes in for a normal week. That's coming in for an extra week now. That's significant. So I feel like the pay for the players should be significant. This makes the pot of money they're pulling from a little bit larger. That's good. You know, the salary cap needs to go up like the NBA did. They need to raise the salary cap, and then we can have our one more game. Now, the way the owners want to do it is they want to eliminate a fourth preseason game. So essentially what they're doing is swapping out a preseason game for a regular season game. I I, I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, on one hand, who, who really likes four preseason games? No one really wants to sit and, 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 and you know, let's get to the season, man. You know, the preseason games, uh, uh, you know, become a crap show sometimes. However, however, I have been that guy who was on the fringe, who was, you know, there's a 53-man roster. I was like 56, 57, 54, right around there. Like, I really, really needed that fourth preseason game to show my stuff later in my career. I really did. And I understand the need for that. So, if I'm one of these guys who's on the fringe, I want a fourth chance to show myself, improve myself before you set the roster and either cut me or keep me. So I get that. However, if I'm a guy that's solidified on a roster, I don't want to have to have one more week of practice, one more week of training camp just to get to the regular season where we get paid for real because really you're getting free labor out of these guys. Training camp is like six weeks of free work. You know, the owners, uh, the team don't pay you anything. Um, you know, you get like per diem, but you don't get paid anything. It's just you're working your butt off for opportunity to make a team where you actually get paid. No one gets any real checks until the regular season starts. And that's what the players are going to argue um, through the NFLPA. When it comes time for this thing to get done, which will probably be next week, where there'll be votes taken and the owners will sit down with, um, you know, all, all the representatives of the NFLPA in a room and they'll yell and they'll scream and they'll hash this thing out. One of the things that the union's going to fight for is we want smaller, or I should say we want uh, shorter training camps, meaning we don't want to be in there for six weeks trying to grind that thing out. No, 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 no. You're going to add more games and you're going to put more of a workload on us and you guys are going to make more money. We want less training camp. Every player dreads training camp. It's the worst time of your life. You are locked in a hotel room. Uh, well, you're not locked. No one's going to keep you in there against you. Well, you can leave, but you ain't going to get your money. But you're in a hotel for a month and a half, essentially, and every day you play football or you watch it on TV or you watch it in the film room, you lift weights and you're on a set schedule. You're not around your family, you're not around your loved ones. And it's a grind, man. It's just, and, it, and it, I, I get the nature of it. It's about team building, it's about bonding, it's about learning that playbook. It's about getting everything set on a roster. 
and finding out the chemistry of your team. I understand that. However, I am with a lot of the veteran players. It does not take six weeks to do that. It, it just doesn't. Um, it's something that I feel like you can do in three and a half weeks, maybe four max. I feel like 30 days is plenty for a training camp. Training camp really shouldn't be longer than 21 days. You need to get in there for three strong weeks, build your chemistry, have a great offseason program, have, have a good workout uh, schedule throughout the summer and the spring. Training camp needs to be three weeks of install, 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 install formations, install the plays you need, install the defenses you need. Um, you know, have a couple times where you're going to be competing full tilt because every team needs that at least uh, one scrimmage during that time just so you know what you got and, and guys know how to perform in whatever system they're going to be in. After that, it's time to get going with the preseason games and it's time to get on out of there. Um, training camp is a breeding ground for injury and stress. and <laughs> Everybody hates training camp. So they're going to fight for less training camp and they're going to fight for less padded practices throughout the regular season, less practices, period. So I don't know if they're going to fight for either an extra off day. Right now, it's, it's customary in the NFL that Tuesday is your off day. You play games on Sunday. You have Monday workout, meaning you work out the lactic acid in the muscles uh, in the morning. It's a light workout, nothing strenuous. And then you watch film and you get yelled at the rest of the day for all your for all your screw ups during the game, no matter win or lose. You come in Monday morning, you work out, and then you go in the film room and you take a beating. Everyone does. I don't care how good you played. They'll find something wrong with it. That's the nature of the business, and that's how you become a professional. That's just how it goes. Tuesday is is the is the off day for about every single team in the league. And if you're a dedicated football player, even on Tuesday, you find some time to go in there and watch some film, spend a little bit of time with your coach. And some guys get an extra workout in on Tuesday. They go in for a run or they do core or they just do something extra. They show their face in the building because they want a reputation of a hard worker in that building. And I get that. And it's important to – I mean, you're, you're pretty much there seven days a week. Um, what players are going to fight for now is a true off day. I believe they're going to fight to have Tuesday – uh, be a situation where you're not even allowed to be in the building. Like get, like get out, get away from the building. That way, if a guy wants to take a quick trip, uh, you know, Monday afternoon and come back, you know, late Tuesday night, they can do that. Uh, if something comes up with the family, it, it adds more flexibility in your schedule because you got to understand football season for basically six months. You know, you are there is no off. There is no even the bye week. Some coaches will only give you maybe three days in a row off because they don't want you know all these young guys with with money and opportunity to have too much time on their hands. Things can go wrong. So. The main things that the players are going to be fighting for is smaller, I repeat, smaller training camps like, you know, shorter, shorten that thing up, less chances of injury if you're going to give us more chance of injury with an extra game. And they're going to want a, a true off day, which means less practice time throughout the season. The biggest change that the owners are proposing, and I think this one will not be contested, this change is going to happen. And NFL fans, get ready for this because this is a real thing. It's going to happen. The playoffs, playoffs, playoffs are going to include an extra team from each conference. Meaning, it's always been this way. Six teams from the NFC, six teams from the AFC. And, you know, the top, the top two or whatever get buys. And the bottom two have to play in the wild card weekend. That's how it's always been. Now we're going to add an extra team in both conferences. So the playoffs will not have 12 teams anymore. They're going to have 14 teams. Put it in perspective, if this system was in place this past season, 2019, the Rams and the Steelers would have made the playoffs because, you know, their records were just good enough. You're going to have a lot of nine-win teams getting in, eight-win teams getting in with this new playoff format. And what does this mean for, for uh, the fans like me, guys on the couch who love football? It means on wild card weekend, you're going to have three games on Saturday to watch and three on Sunday. Um, that's pretty cool, right? You know, you, you got 12 teams battling it out right there. I think that's pretty dope because only two teams are going to have a bye in this new system. So team number 13 and 14 get the week off. Sneaky thing they did here, which is a good, sneaky good, I should say for the players, is people don't know this, but your regular season pay – is, you know, your your salary is based on the regular season. So just to give a round number, right? Like if you if you make 800k for the season, it means you get $800,000 throughout the course of the 17 weeks of the season. That is, you know, 16 games in the bye week. Um so for those, you know, 17 weeks, 
that's what you make. When the playoff time comes, that's bonus money, right? So I didn't know this <laughs> because I was drafted by the Oakland Raiders and we never made the playoffs my four, my first four years. So I didn't know anything about the playoffs. Uh, in my fifth year, I get to Seattle and that was the year that Beast Mode had that crazy run when we beat the Saints and, and you know, Marshawn uh, literally ran over every single player in a Saints uniform. We made the playoffs. Well, for that week, I got paid, I don't know, it was like 30 grand, something like that, for the first week of the playoffs. Another 35, something like that, for the second week. And then if you make it to the championship, you know, AFC championship game, you get like, I'm sorry, AFC or NFC doesn't matter. I think it's like 50K. And then the Super Bowl, everyone gets 100 grand if, if you're playing in the Super Bowl. Every, every guy on both teams. Pretty cool. What people don't realize is if you have a bye week, like, like Patriots usually have a bye week because they're usually the top seed in the AFC. If you have a bye week, then you don't play week one of the playoffs, right? Wild card weekend, you don't play because you have a bye. So all those wild card teams get a check. You do not get a check for wild card weekend, and yet you're in the playoffs. So that's going to change. So that means those two teams get a buy, still get a game check, uh, which is pretty cool for that week. I imagine they're thrilled about that. So playoffs means more money for the players. It means more football for the fans. It means more money for the owners. Uh, and it means, you know, two more televised games. That's big. That's very big. So this is a good change. That will happen. And once again, this will inflate the TV deals um, and the networks are going to pay big time dollars for that. I just want everyone to know what's being argued upon. You know, the only thing that players are really going to push back on is if you want that 17th game, they are going to need additional funds um, in, in, that, in that pot for the players, which either raise the salary cap or just everyone's salary needs to raise um, prorated kind of, but not really, uh, but it needs to raise one game. So if you're making, you know, 500 K for that season, then, you know, your new salary needs to be 500 and, you know, 50 K, however much you would have made with, you know, on one extra game check. They just, you know, I'm listen, I'm not doing the math here right now. I'm not an accountant. I just know you got to pay the guys if you haven't played football. I'm sorry. You can't, no one's out here working for free. It'd be like me asking you to work overtime, but we're not going to pay you. That's crazy. So that's going to, that's going to be something that's going to be a battle. And as we saw on ESPN today and Jeff Saturday talking about how he was in that room and he, he knows how it is to go in there with all those owners and yell and scream and, and you're fighting for your side and everyone's digging in. At some point, you got to come to a compromise. That's why it's called negotiation, which means both sides will probably miss out on something um, that they really wanted. However, everyone will agree that this is the best way to move forward. The CBA will happen, and I think it will get done in the next 12 to 13 days, and that's going to be big. There will be no lockout this year, thankfully. We'll have football, and I think everyone's going to get what they were looking for, uh, or at least close to it. At the end of the day, though, it always comes down to the money. And these 32 guys that own these 32 teams do not like parting with a cent. They're all like Scrooge McDuck, man. It's crazy. And they'll sit and they'll tell you about, listen, you know how much it costs to maintain this stadium and pay all these employees and yada, yada, yada. You're making plenty. You're not worried about all those expenses. Because if, if you were, you'd open up your books, with the, which the owners have never opened up their books to show you know, their P&L sheets and all that, so we know what they're making. They're, they would never do that. They're like, they're like, <laughs> they're kind of like Donald Trump. Like, no, 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 no. You don't need to see the returns. You don't need to see it. Just trust us. We're, we're really struggling as we, you know, send our kids off to vacation in Europe every five minutes, and we all are buying bigger yachts every other summer. So this is going to happen. It's going to happen soon. We're excited about uh, a new CBA, uh, the players, and I think, I think the new look NFL for 2020 is going to be dramatically different when it comes to the end of the season because those last couple games now are going to be very, very uh, intense and you're not going to see people benching uh, starters because there's going to be a little bit more on the line. There's more playoff slots and it, it means a little bit more. And Wild Card Weekend is going to be bananas, uh, which will be, what, um, you know, January, February of 2021. It's going to be nuts, man. So I'm excited about the new CBA. I'm excited about where the NFL is headed. I just hope they get the new game stuff figured out. I hope they pay guys, and I hope they still allow for the young guys and the free agents who are on new teams to have a fair chance to prove themselves in training camp while at the same time, you know, keeping guys off their feet in training camp as much as possible because, you know, it's a, it's a brutal sport. But we still have to find out who's who in camp, and that's just how things roll. Um, last but not least today, there's a couple little NFL, you know, news and notes that just things that have happened. You're like, what is going on? Um, 
you know, offensive lineman from from the Cleveland Browns, Greg Robinson, got got found crossing the border with 157 pounds of that green, of that herb. Apparently, he was going from Los Angeles, California, and trying to get back to Louisiana, where he's from. He had a driver and a couple other guys in there, and they rented an SUV. I don't know how you, I don't know how big this SUV was. I don't think people realize just how much 157 pounds of weed really is got pulled over and what's going to get him is he sent a text message to the driver saying man just take the fall for this and we'll and uh, we got your back and i'll make sure you're straight bad bad move he is going down he's facing 20 years let me tell you something about uh not that i know anything about selling weed all i'm gonna say is you don't move that much weed in a damn uber or a rental um and if you're the one trying to sell it and you're the one buying it, you certainly don't want to be in the vehicle while it's being transported. There's a reason people from other countries, when they move uh, extreme amounts, do it through the air. It's because you don't want to get pulled over by Border Patrol, which is exactly what happened in Texas. So why would you drive it through Texas? I don't know anything about this game, but I know if I was doing it, I would not have gone that route. Um, so if I was given like a dummy of the week award, I would give it to Craig Robinson. You are the two cent sports dummy of the week. Why are you selling this much weed and you got an NFL contract and you making good money? Okay, I, listen, somebody watched one too many movies and thought I'm gonna be a kingpin, you're a psychopath and you are the dummy of the week. I'm gonna add that new segment. I'm gonna let our producer know we have a new segment. It's the two cents dummy of the week. I'll find one every week from here on out because that's bananas um that has been all for the two cents show before i get out of here i want to shout out lebron for for weighing in on the astros debacle and being honest and just saying hey if i was a uh you know one of the teams that played against the astros and and got cheated out of uh, a chance at a championship by a team that was cheating i would be irate and people gave lebron some flack about you know you know you don't know baseball i can listen we know sports. We know no cheater should should be allowed to 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 keep their trophy once it's proved that they cheated. I don't know how the Astros are not, or how MLB is not vacating the, you know the championship won by the Astros or the Red Sox for that matter. Um, it just tells you why that sport has gone so downhill and why it's no longer America's pastime because it is so ridiculously corrupt. And there's a new huge scandal every handful of years from the roids, um, you know, to sign stealing and all of this stuff that's going on. It's, it's just kind of ridiculous, man. You know, uh, it's it's an ugly, ugly look for the sport of baseball. And it's it's really too bad. So that is all for the two cents show today. As always, like subscribe. You can catch me at, at Jay Richardson 99 on both Twitter and IG. You can catch us at two cents show uh, on both platforms as well. Also, be looking out, uh, be on the lookout, I should say, for a Loose Change episode coming up soon. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about some interesting Kyrie Irving news that we might have found out today and what that means for the Nets and the future uh, of his career and how it ties in with Kevin Durant. Until next time, folks, have a good one.